boy, right away, when you pull up to this house, you know a gardener lives here. Look at this beautiful canopy of these big trees. And you got the spider lilies over here. The spider lilies around this tree over here. As we come in up over here, we see all the things that we have in here. Oh my gosh. We're back at Panthers, roses, daylilies. Here we go. Look at these tomatoes. One, two, three. Man. What wonderful we have already. Good Lord. Can you believe we have tomatoes growing like that? Look, you got tomatoes. Tomatoes. Tomatoes in the front yard. Wow, this is great. We need to go talk to this gardener. So let's go. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Gardener. Today, I'm with Nancy Wells in the Woodlands, Texas just north of Houston. Nancy is a gardener. Well, matter of fact, I've known her all my life. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. This is my sister. <laughs> so she's going to show us today some of the tomatoes mm. she has just harvested. So what do you got for us? All right, I have, uh, here are some black plum. Ooh. Don't those look, those are uh, quite large compared to a cherry tomato, but a good medium size. And these would be uh, black cherry. Black cherry. Those are nice. Uh, this one is a new one. I've, I've never tried this one before called Sophia. Sophia, okay. Very nice you hardy plant. Like regular size okay. <laughs> and then uh, this is a, a, a yellow Roma tomato named uh, Golden Fresh Salsa. Ought to make really nice salsa okay. with that. And um, we think this is something called pork chop okay a yellow this is the first one so neither she or I are quite certain that that's it but we'll find out here when more come off the vine and this is a variety I've never grown before uh, called um, Berkeley has a little bit of a stripe uh, as it's ripening uh, and then when it's fully ripe it's gonna be red okay and I cherries. love these. These have a very nice taste. These are called uh, chocolate sprinkles. Okay. Look similar in color to the purple bumblebee that I grew last year. These mm -hmm. are uh, a little bit smaller than purple bumblebee, but similar coloring. So tell me a little bit about your, your backyard here. How long did it take you to have this wonderful foliage that you have? Okay, we've been here about 14 years and um, it's always a work in progress. Things are always changing in the garden. If a plant doesn't work in one spot, well, I'll move it somewhere else. Uh, and sometimes it doesn't work at all. Well, I'll just get rid of the thing and put something else in. Plus your shade changes. That's the main uh, well, problem I've in, had. In the woodlands here, they're known vegetables. for all the trees. Exactly. So, so you have a challenge just with the trees. Right, exactly, exactly. So as you can see, because of that, I plant a lot of tomatoes in pots. Okay, all right. So, so tell us about your compost pot over here. All right, this is called a garden tower. Um, it's a self-sustaining uh, system in that in the center, there's a tube. You can open the top and you can put your food waste um, down in there. Right now I've got, oh, coffee grounds and orange peels, banana peels. Um, so you just put those in there and of course I've got worms in in the whole system and the tube that goes all the way down in the middle has holes in it so the worms go in and out they aerate the soil they eat the the compost uh, composted food and it comes out the bottom there's a, a, a panel that unscrews and you can get the compost out in a few months how um, often do you get the compost out every couple of months uh, this one, Isn't that the Berkeley? This, is, this is the Berkeley, You've got the nice stripes on it, and I uh, haven't had any ripen yet, so I can't tell you how fantastic it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm crossing my fingers on that. You have a nice little uh, trellis walkthrough. What sort of vines do you have growing through there? I've got 
two different roses on uh, on this and that were absolutely ah. stunning this spring. They're both pink. One is a little bit larger and uh, one I think is, uh, oh, what's the most popular one that everyone grows? The little, little pinky, perhaps? And it sort of cascades down into this other flower bed. Uh, and then through here is an area where I've planted vegetables. I do much better in the winter garden because I don't have shade from all the trees. I've got your kale left over from the winter, some herbs, uh, some butterfly weed so I can have some nice butterflies. Got some cucumbers, some peppers, got my, uh, my black plum, which is, is starting to get a few ripe ones there at the bottom. Then I've got some eggplant over here in pots that are coming on. These patio eggplants are really nice and flavorful. Sweet million. And uh, this is a new variety which I thought might be good for Houston. It's called Florida 91. It's supposed to be good in that hot, humid climate, so I'm giving it a go. All right. And it looks to be pretty successful so far. <laughs> Nothing right, but it got a lot of got a lot of tomatoes. Treat you got there. This is a Meyer lemon. Um, it's been a little intermittent in its fruit. Um, last year, I had over a hundred lemons. Unbelievable. Uh, the year before that, I had three lemons. <laughs> so this year, I have a lot of. It, it, lots of blooms, lots of little, uh, looks like fruit on it. So I'm going to cross my fingers that maybe we're going to be in a fruiting year. So man, when did you determine that you really did like gardening? What inspired you? Oh my gosh. Well, I've grown up with a mom who had a green, a green, green thumb. And, uh, she was in the, as you know, a garden club and, um, flower shows and flower arranging and I never got into that part of it but but I did enjoy the, the growing. Your mother's been one of the biggest garden inspirations or have you had other people you follow? Oh I've had a couple of other gardening friends that um, you know we inspire one another share plants with with each other okay. and um, that's always fun and and I love going out to nurseries and, and seeing uh, seeing what's new and, and how they arrange things and um, get ideas and I've always been a, a, a person that loves color so okay. I try to always have color going in the yard somewhere. And, and we can see that, that by these flower pots over here arranged. Mm -hmm. I can tell you every time I come to visit there's always something fresh from the nursery waiting to be planted. Well the other thing is um, <clears throat> my husband doesn't like to have any any um, decorations in the house with flowers on them. No flowered pillows, no flowered couches, no <laughs> fabric that's flowered. So as a result, I have all of my flowers outside. That, that's a true Texas cowboy, just bread and butter, exactly, steak and beans. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, tell me, what are some of your favorite public gardens? Uh, well, in Houston, there's, you know, the Botanical uh, Arboretum, Houston Arboretum. Um, but I absolutely love going to Arbor Gate because they've just, um, they've just got tons of new, uh, new plants and, and now, always blooming. Is and Arbor Gate here in Houston? Arbor Gate is, is here in, in Tomball. And then I love in Brenham the, um, the Rose Emporium. I'm, I'm oh, a yes. lover of roses, although, uh, I, I don't have much sun anymore, so I can't really put too many in the yard, but um, so it, it's always a fun visit. Yeah, that's kind of like a nursery and a display garden all in one. Exactly, exactly. What's the theme of how you garden? I would say I'm more of a uh, cottage style gardener. Um, I like the wild and the unexpected, the whimsical. Um, and gardens will give you that if you you allow them the opportunity you will get surprises that um, colors you didn't know were going to go together okay. um, butterflies you didn't know I liked a certain flower. I noticed you have a number of nice textures over here in this area yes. over here with the ferns and the uh, ginger and is that uh, what is this over here? Oh that's the mint you had the in mint. your iced tea. Oh I had <laughs> mint in my iced tea that's right and then you have such a, a beautiful collection in your front yard, which was a surprise, because most people don't 
have a cottage style in the front yard and you have a, a bountiful grouping of different types of flowers. So Nancy, I see you have dogs and most people that have dogs really have trouble keeping them out of the garden. What's your secret? I tell you, it, it's a challenge. Um, you have to make allowances for the dogs. If you're gonna have dogs and you're gonna have a garden, you need to make allowances for them. Okay. So we have built uh, along the back um, kind of a little runway for them so that they have a place that they can run. Um, Speaking of dogs. <laughs> and some people um, actually train their dogs to uh, to go in one area. Now we've never really accomplished that. We just kind of work around the work around the the poop. I did have a lab that you're stealing the show. <laughs> I, did, I did have a lab that loved to chew woody plants and ate every azalea that I planted. Oh no! So I finally got smart and brought home a log from, or you know, small uh, log from the park for her to chew. So I think the idea was to provide her something so that she would leave mine alone. Okay, it's a great idea. So that work? It did work. It did work, and also I moved the azaleas to the front. <laughs> <laughs> so if you like this episode of Meet the Gardener, give us a thumbs up and come back and see us real soon.